Hey, and welcome back to another 3D how-to video in Blender. So to continue our 3D fantasy RPG model set, we're going to make our first enemy for the game, which will be a giant spider. So go ahead and open up a new session of Blender and we'll get started. So let's just go ahead and delete the uh, default cube first. We don't really need to use that. So click delete. And we're going to import an icosphere. So that'll be a sphere with triangular sections, which will really go well with the low poly look that we're going for. So in object mode, we'll go down to add, mesh, and icosphere. There we go. And we can just start it out with the default size there. But what we're going to do is change how it looks a little bit by scaling it in object mode. And we're going to scale it just around a couple of axes. So with the object highlighted, hit S on the keyboard. And we're going to scale it in the uh, Z direction. So it's going to flatten it out a little bit. OK, let's get a top view. Let's make sure that we're out of perspective view. I'm really not a fan of that. I like being an orthographic view. There we go. And I think we're going to also scale it in the um, in the Y direction a little bit. There we go. So we have a little bit of more of like an oval shape here. OK, so let's do the same thing for a head. While it's still in object mode, let's go to Add, Mesh, and Icosphere. And we can just move that forward a little bit by grabbing the origin arrows. And we're just going to shrink that down. Um, let's make it about that big. We can still shrink it a little bit. Okay, hit S on the keyboard again to scale. Okay, maybe move it down a little bit. And let's also scale it in the Z direction to flatten it out a little bit. So the next thing that we're going to do is move on to the legs, and those are going to be really simple as well. So before we import anything else, let's make sure that we're keeping up with the management of our outliner up here. So we know that this icosphere that we brought in was the body, so let's just go ahead and label that body. And this one is the head, so we can label that head. Good. So that way, if we want to change the color or alter them somehow, we know what we're clicking on in the outliner. It's a really quick way to uh, jump right into edit mode uh, if you want to target a single part of your model. So let's go ahead and bring in the legs. So still while in object mode, let's go to add, mesh, and cylinder. And we're going to make this a pretty low poly cylinder. Let's see what 12 looks like for our um, vertice count. And that looks pretty good. And when we shrink it, it's going to look a lot less um, blocky. It's going to kind of shrink all of those down. And it'll look like there are a lot more vertices than in this larger version of it. So first, let's just scale it down. We can do that in object mode. OK, let's just keep scaling it down. And you might need to zoom in a little bit because when you're scaling and scaling with the mouse button, uh, you kind of create this line that increases and decreases the radius and the length of it. So when you're zoomed out and you're trying to go from maybe like this size down here, the amount that you have to move the mouse is a lot smaller than if you're zoomed in. OK, so let's make it about that big. Let's start off by rotating it in the uh, Y direction. OK. And let's kind of put that into place with the origin arrows. So we'll go with that. Yeah, that's a pretty good size. And at this point, let's go ahead into edit mode. So from object to edit mode, we're going to click on this face right here. We're going to go ahead and extrude it away from the body. So when we click extrude, it automatically extrudes uh, perpendicular to the face. So we're going to move it out to about there. Well, let's go ahead and rotate this a little bit more. Let's go back in object mode, and that allows us to move the whole thing without having to select individual faces, vertices, or edges. And we're going to rotate it a little bit more. Let's go back into edit mode. And the next thing we're going to do is have to model the kind of joint that branches out the next part of the leg. So we're going to extrude this. And with that face still selected, let's rotate it a little bit. And we're going to rotate that in the Y direction. Now let's make sure that everything is deselected and add another cylinder. So let's go to Add Cylinder and make sure that the vertice count is correct. Yep, that's 12. Let's move this a little bit into place. Let's shrink it down. So to make it look like this comes out of the leg, let's just extrude this face in a little bit. And we want to make sure that it doesn't come through the other side. OK, that looks pretty good. Now from here, let's extrude this face out to create the next section. So hit E on the keyboard to extrude. And we might need to rotate this a little bit more, because this is a little bit too wide. We don't want the leg to come out all the way out here. 
So in edit mode, we can select this whole cylinder. Let's use border select. And we see that we selected a little bit of the, uh, the base of the leg. So if we exit wireframe mode and we hold down shift, we can deselect what we don't want to move. This is kind of a big reason why I like uh, separating as many pieces as I can in object mode so that when you want to select certain things you don't have to deselect certain things and you don't have a connection to the other parts of the model but since we're in edit mode I'd like to keep these legs all together okay now let's rotate this in the Y direction a little bit Okay, so we're going to make one more section of the leg, and that's going to come pretty much either straight down or a little bit towards the spider's body. So let's do the same thing that we did with the connection between this part of the leg that we just created and the base of the leg. We're going to extrude this face out a little bit and rotate it. So hit E on the keyboard to extrude, and we're going to extrude directly away from the leg. And we're going to make it about that long, and we're going to rotate it around the Y axis. Okay. We check our joint here, we can see it's a little bit twisted. So if we hit R on the keyboard, we can just go ahead and rotate it so that the sections are a little straighter. Now let's go ahead and import one more cylinder for this leg. Let's move it into place. Let's make it a little bit longer so it's a little bit easier to work with. So with the bottom face selected, we're just gonna drag that out a little bit. And let's try to angle this so that it's angled a little bit towards the body. And there's a good reason to why we're rotating it and we're not uh, kind of just dragging the faces relative to one another. If we have this bottom face selected and we move the origin arrows, we're changing the angle of the leg in our workspace. But if we zoom around, we can see that it changes shape when we do that. It creates more of an oval cross section along the leg. And we don't want that. We want to maintain a circular cross section for this application. So we're going to rotate the whole thing. So while it's uh, straight up and down, we're just going to elongate it in the Z axis a little bit. And now let's hit Z on the keyboard to go into wireframe mode and use border select by clicking B to highlight the whole leg. And again, we may need to deselect some faces as we do that. Okay, now let's rotate it around the Y axis. So clicking R on the keyboard and then rotating around the Y, let's move it back into place. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. The last thing that we wanna do with this leg is just make it so that it comes out at a point. So let's go ahead and extrude this face out a little bit. So with that bottom face selected, hit S on the keyboard to scale, and let's just roughly form it into a point. There we go. Let's go ahead and stretch that down a little bit so it's a little bit longer. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. So we have our leg created, and if we wanted to, we could go ahead and add some more section lines and possibly scale some of the edges and faces that we created, but let's leave it like this for now. So let's exit edit mode into object mode, and there we have our first leg. That actually doesn't look too bad. I'm pretty proud of that so far. So let's go ahead up into the outliner and make sure that we're maintaining some outliner management here, and we're going to call this leg. And the good news here is that the spider's legs all look the same. So all we have to do is duplicate them and put them in a position around the spider. So with the whole leg selected, which you could either do by clicking on it in the workspace or clicking on it up in the outliner. And so what I like to do is when I duplicate with Shift D, I like to just click it into place. And now that that new duplication is selected, I can just move it into place with the origin arrows. So what we're going to do is just duplicate these legs and move them into position. Okay, so with these legs created and put into position on this side of the spider, we want to move them on the other side as well. And the best way to do that is with the mirror modifier. That will ensure that the other side of the spider is a mirror image as this one. So to do that, we select one of the legs, we go to add modifier under the modifier tab, and we select mirror modifier. Now the mirror plane that's created depends on what is selected under these axes here. When X is selected, that means the mirror plane will be in the Y and Z. When Y is selected, that means its plane would be in the X and Z. And with Z selected, that means that the mirror plane will be created by the X and Y axes. Now those planes are dictated by what is considered the local origin of that part, which you can set. But we don't want to use the local origin of the leg. We want to use the origin of the body so it mirrors to the other side of the body. 
So under mirror object, we're gonna select body, and this is another reason why it comes in handy to make sure that all of your parts are labeled under your outliner. So after that's done, go ahead and hit apply, and let's do that for the rest of the legs. Okay, there we go, we have the body, the head, and the legs complete. So the next thing to do is just to add a couple features on the head. So we're gonna add some eyes and some fangs. So that's gonna be really simple. Let's go ahead and import some icospheres and arrange them on the head. So let's go to add, mesh, and icosphere. Let's move that to the front here, scale it way down till it's the size that we want for the eye. We're gonna make them pretty small. There we go. It's pretty good for now, let's move them into place. All right, I think that looks pretty good, so let's go ahead and add some fangs as well. So let's go to Add, Mesh, and we're gonna make those out of cones. We want these to be about 12 vertices just to maintain our uh, low poly look, and let's shrink that down. So let's go ahead and scale it in the Z direction to lengthen it out a little bit, maybe shrink the whole thing down some more, and let's move it into place. Okay, and now all we have to do is mirror it on the other side of the body. So with the fang selected, let's go ahead to add modifier, mirror, and we want it to be on the YZ plane just like the legs, and the mirror object will be the body. There we go. So let's go ahead and give the spider some color. So let's make the main body part uh, dark purple. There we go. Let's do the same thing for the head. Go to the material tab. Go down to Diffuse, there we go. And you can make sure that the colors match and everything if you want by uh, under Diffuse. If you go to Hex, you, you can just copy this number and enter it into the other input for whatever you're trying to color. Okay, okay, let's color the legs black. And let's go ahead and make the eyes bright green. Okay, and let's go ahead and leave the fangs gray. So go ahead and make your own spider model and don't forget to tweet me a picture of it. If you have any questions or suggestions for the channel, please leave them down in the comments below. And if you got something out of this video, make sure that you like and subscribe. Alright, I'll see you in the next video.